So where we left off in the last video, we kept trying to approximate this purple f of x by with a polynomial, and we 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 at first said, well, let's just make the polynomial a constant and set it, uh, you know, it's just going to intersect uh, f of zero at x is equal to zero, and so that's a first. Uh, you could kind of almost think of it as a zeroth order approximation of the function. And then we said, oh, well, what if not only do they intersect at x is equal to 0, but let's say that their slope is the same at x is equal to 0, and that's that approximation. And that's about as good as you're going to do with a line, especially as you get close to 0. And we said, OK, that's good. But what if their second derivative is the same? And that's where we ended up with, uh, we added this term here. And I hinted that we'll just keep doing this process. So let me, oh, that's not what I want to do. We could just keep doing this process. And so you could imagine, if I want their third derivative to be the same, if I want the third derivative the same, I could add another term right here, plus, where I know what the value of f of x's third derivative is at 0. So f, I'll write that as f to the, the third derivative at 0, times x to the third. Now what do you think is going to be down here? What's going to be the denominator? You might be tempted to say, you might be tempted to say um, that, that we'll put a 3 down here. But it turns out you're going to have to put a 3 times a 2, which is a 6, or 3 factorial. Now why is that? Why is that? Well, let, let, let's just, let me just take a little departure here, and I think you'll start to understand why you put a 6 down here, why this isn't a 3 and you put a 6. Here you put a 2, but 2 is also 2 factorial, right? 2 factorial is 2 times 1. Right. Hopefully you remember what factorial. Actually, let me let me tell you what factorial is just in case. Ten factorial is equal to ten times nine times eight times seven da 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 times two times one. So you're multiplying all of the numbers up to that number. You know, four factorial is e and the numbers get big very very fast. Is four times three times two times one. You know, two factorial is equal to two times one. One factorial is equal to one. And now this is kind of a weird definition. It comes out of combinatorics. And actually, it works for uh, what we're doing as well. 0 factorial is also equal to 1. I know that might be a little un unintuitive. And this is just a definition. It's like saying that i squared is equal to negative 1. It is a definition, but it, work it, makes things, uh, it makes formulas be more general, I guess is a simple way to put it. But let me erase all of this, because that was just a divergence, just because I realized I was going to use factorial. So you should know what a factorial is. But I think that's a fairly straightforward concept. So going back to what we were doing, I was asking you, why do I put a 6 down here instead of a 3, like we put a 2 here? Well, let's just take this term alone and take its third derivative, right? So if I have this term and it's you know f, the, the third derivative at 0, x to the third over, let me, and let me just write 6 as 3 times 2, or 2 times 3, 2 times 3. And that'll make it a little more clear. What's the, what's the first derivative here? What happens when I take the derivative once? Well, I'm going to multiply the whole thing by this exponent and decrement the exponent, right? So I'm going to multiply the whole thing times 3 times f, the third derivative, x squared over 2 times 3. So that first time I did it, the, this 3 and this 3 cancel out, right? That, that, that red's looking a little bit too demonic. Let me pick another color. OK, fine. And then when I take the second derivative, what am I going to get? Well, the 3 is gone. Now I just have a 2 in the denominator, right? So I multiply the whole thing by 2 times f prime 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 of 0 times, and I decrement the exponent, x to the 1 over 2. Well, now the 2's cancel out, right? So the reason why you're putting a factorial there is every time you take a derivative, you're decrementing the exponent 1 and multiplying the whole expression by the exponent. So if you're going to take you know, n derivatives, you're essentially going to have to you're essentially going to be multiplying this expression times n factorial. And so you, you don't want an n factorial out here. You, you put an n factorial at the bottom. Hopefully that makes sense. Play around with it yourself, and, and it, should, it should start to, to make a little bit more sense. So in general, if we just kept doing this process forever, what would the function look like? What would the function look like? And the reason why I'm covering this is because Going this way, we're going to be able to prove what I think is the most uh, mind, uh, mind-bending concept in mathematics. And it will make you love mathematics, hopefully. Some people actually, well, I won't go into the spiritual aspects of it. But 
So, so what would be this if I just kept saying that you know I'm just going to keep taking derivatives and 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 adding and adding them to this term, this polynomial? Well, the polynomial would become p of x is equal to is equal to f of zero plus f prime of zero x, and let's just divide it by one factorial just to make it clear that that's a one factorial, right? And that's an x to the one, right? That's just this term, but I just wrote it a little differently. And this is that you could almost this term right here. This is f of zero times x to the zero. I know that's really messy, but hopefully you see what I'm saying. And that's over zero factorial, right? Zero factorial is one. X to the zero is one, so it's just f of zero. And then plus the second derivative at zero times x squared over two factorial plus, and we just keep adding the third derivative. Z, the the third derivative at f at x is equal to zero of x to the third over three factorial and we just keep keep going on right so we could do this to infinity and actually we will do it and this is called the Maclaurin series so if we just wanted to approximate this as hard as we can just to essentially take the infinite derivatives of it we get the Maclaurin series so we are going to define this polynomial p of x going to be the infinite series, the infinite sum. Let's start with n is equal to 0. And we're going to go to infinity. Infinity. And what is the each term? Well, or the, the term, let's think of, you know, it's going to be f of, what's well, going to be f, the nth derivative, the nth derivative of f evaluated at 0, right, times x to the n over n factorial. This is the Maclaurin series. And, and we'll later learn we'll, that Maclaur, the Maclaurin series is a specific example of the powers of, of the Taylor series, which is a specific example of, of a power series. But anyway, this might seem very complicated to you. I have all the sigma notation. Just remember, you know, this is essentially just that, and I just keep going to infinity. And if you play around with it, it should make sense. But I think this will become a lot more concrete when I do this with a specific f of x. And this is where it gets cool, in case you don't think it's already cool. So let's pick f of x to be, to me, the most amazing function of them all. If I ever built a shrine or a church or something or a skyscraper, I would, I would somehow make this this function show up all over the place and then years from now people would be would, would would be awed by the mysticism of it all. But anyway, let's try to approximate e to the x uh, with a Maclaurin series. And you know that sigma thing, the thing that's hard to memorize. Just remember you want all the derivatives to be the same. So let's make the approximation of this. So I'll you know and we'll actually learn. Actually, I won't prove it. It's out of the scope of, of what we're doing right now. But the approximation, even when it's centered at 0, actually equals the function when you take the infinite sum. But let's just see what it looks like. Because this is pretty cool. Well, actually, let, let, me, let me, before we start building the polynomial, let's just figure out a couple of things. So what is, so what is, um, what is f prime of x? Well, that's also e to the x, right? What's f prime prime? of x. Well, that is also equal to e to the x, right? We have learned, and, and I actually recently did a proof, that the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. But that always means the second derivative, and the third, and the fourth, and the nth derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x, right? I could take an arbitrary number of derivatives of e to the x, and it equals e to the x, which is amazing. The rate of change of the function at at you know any at any point is equal to the function. The rate of change of the rate of change of the function at any point is equal to the function. The rate of change. I mean that's. It, I I I want to just go someplace and and ponder it, but I'm too busy making videos. But anyway, back to what we were doing. So what is f of zero? F of zero is just is equal to e to the zero, which is equal to one, right? Well, that's also going to be f prime of zero. That's also e to the zero, which is equal to one. So f all of the derivatives, f the nth derivative at zero is going to equal one for this specific case of f of x for e to the x, and that's why this is so cool. But actually, it it, it actually gets even more amazing. So you hopefully realize that f of x, f of zero and all of its derivatives at zero 
are equal to 1. So now we can do the powers of the Maclaurin series in the next video.